Artificial intelligence is making steady advances across the financial services industry. AI has the power to revolutionize operations and services, but it also has the potential to destabilize and damage operations. Joining us now to explore the benefits and pitfalls of AI is Dr. Eng Lim Go, Vice President, Chief Technology Officer, High Performance Computing and Artificial Intelligence at Hewlett Packard Enterprises. Welcome to Cybos TV. Thank you for having me, Juliet and Johnny. Thank yes. You. So we'll get straight into it. How are you addressing the issue of inherent bias in data modeling? This is a difficult one, unsolved fully today. Right. A machine is only as smart and as biased uh, as the data you feed it with. Right? And, and it is learning through uh, massive amounts of data that the humans supply. If the data contains bias, so will the machine it's be It's human bias. Mm. Yes, that's right. In, in, uh, a lot of times, a uh, machine consume, uh, to achieve artificial intelligence, it consumes uh, human historical data. And if you do not uh, deal with those biases in that data, uh, the machine will adopt them. So first and foremost, to, uh, to, to handle this, we need to recognize that fact. Right? And therefore, we must look at that data carefully. Uh, and as such, uh, there are three different ways people are thinking of to deal with this, in addition to the one that's been published. One uh, is to have uh, a person responsible for looking at that data because that's what's being fed to the machine. And not just a data scientist, but someone uh, on the ethics side, for, uh, for example, uh, to be responsible for providing uh, the right kind of data, uh, fair data for the machine. Secondly, when a machine makes a mistake, uh, the mistake can be crazy wrong, mm. right? It seldom makes mistake for the very specific task you give it, provided you have enough data to train it with. But when it makes a mistake, it can be quite crazy wrong. As such, the second way uh, to deal with this, in addition to the first, is to put a set of rules around it mm. to make sure it doesn't go off the curve. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So these are the some of the two ways right, uh, you can use to help mitigate uh, bias in systems. And we've also built technology, the yeah. third way, where we allow systems to train in, 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 uh, in their islands, right? that might be biased. And what we do is, after one set of training that are biased in each island, we collect th the learnings and average them out right. and send those learnings back for them to continue the next epoch of learning. Right. And then average, uh, send all the learnings again back up to a central location, average them out and send them back out. So we develop a technology called swarm learning to try and mitigate bias by averaging them out over multiple epochs. Mm. At the same time, AI does require plenty of data for training the models, but then that yeah. raises another question. Who owns that data and how can it best be leveraged in a way that is ethical and above all does not compromise privacy? That's a great question. You know, uh, the difficulty today is uh, many organizations uh, thinking of embarking uh, on machine learning towards artificial intelligence, for example, in FinTech, right, to address a certain specific task right, uh, and, and to offload human or because it is very error prone when human are working on these tasks um, are, are always mundane and repetitive. The issue with that is that you need massive amounts of data to train a system so that it gets to, pr to a precision level that you are comfortable with. Uh, and many companies don't have that data, or if they do, it wasn't, uh, they, they aren't of high enough quality, mm. right? Uh, so first and foremost, don't delete your data. <laughs> they are the new intellectual property. Right, Convince okay. the, your board of directors that investing in uh, curating and, and keeping data is, is going to be the next uh, competitive advantage. Right? So we need to, sp to, to invest in them. And secondly, um, start collecting them. Don't delete the old ones, start collecting new ones, right? Invest in collection, but of course within privacy laws. Right? Yeah. And, and finally, if you still don't have, I have enough and you need to start now, you, you may have to form, form consortiums. So you see credit card companies, even though they are competing, have to come together and share their fraud data because their adversaries even more, uh, uh, needs this combined data to deal with, right? Uh, so consortiums are, are another option. So don't delete your old data, valuable, invest in it, in, in keeping them. Uh, start collecting, invest in it, mm. right? 
and form consortiums if it's not enough today. Mm. Even though uh, they may be com your competitors, but your adversary, you have an even bigger adversary yes, out yes. there that you need to form a consortium among competitors. Yeah. Banks have done that. Yeah. Uh, credit, credit card companies have done that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. One fear, I guess some people may particularly un understandably have of AI is, is that we'll all be obsolete at ah. some point <laughs> in the future. Uh, so what skills do you reckon a human being perhaps should have in order to remain relevant in, in an AI-driven world? Yes, working, working in, in machine learning towards artificial intelligence, uh, you know, implementing many of these use cases uh, for finance, for retail, uh, and even for, for space, right, for, with NASA. Um, I get asked this question a lot. Yeah, it's a great question, and people are con truthfully concerned. Many of the successful production, right, sustained production uh, AI systems are very, very specific in terms of what it can predict and, and can do, right? So they are very, very specific intelligence, yeah? And therefore, they are great at tasks, not jobs, especially multi-skilled jobs. Right. So one thing is, uh, make sure your job requires multiple skills, <laughs> not just a specific task. Yeah. Do as many as you can. <laughs> yes, uh, and, and have jobs that require a combination of skills, right? And, and eventually, because uh, as, as the workload increases, and as the company decides not to hire more people to deal with the increased workload, you automate some of the tasks, mm -hmm. while you are still the overlord of all these uh, uh, automated tasks, yeah, right. Uh, so that's uh, multi-skilled jobs uh, will be doctors are multi-skilled, right? Uh, they can diagnose medical images, uh, they can talk to patients, mm. uh, they can uh, operate, right? So these are multi-skilled jobs where uh, AI won't take over immediately, you, or they may need multiple AIs to take over. But uh, in the end, you still need someone responsible for making decisions. Yeah? You could have a machine which helps uh, operate on somebody, uh, but at the same time, it, it may not be able to, it can't speak to uh, the, uh, yes. the patient. Yeah. And, and reassure the patient to the, to the right touch. level, you know, and that's what patients want, yeah. Mm. i give you another example. Where, right, uh, we were called to a hospital uh, with high incidences of tuberculosis in that city. Mm. To the extent that the city decided to x-ray everybody above a certain age. They could x-ray fast enough, the problem is uh, the doctors couldn't cope with diagnosing those mm. images, and it took uh, two weeks uh, to decide, to, to, to clear the backlog. With the problem is this, if someone has TB, goes in, does an x-ray, he or she goes on spreading the disease right. for two more weeks before being caught. So what we did is uh, we, did, we, we took all the old images, right, w that have already been labeled uh, positive or negative by the doctors, and then we trained a neural network, AI system, to recognize them, attached it to an X-ray machine. A person comes in, does the X-ray, the machine immediately tells the person, you are okay. Oh, by the, by the way, you still have to wait two weeks for the doctor to certify you're okay. Yeah. Because the responsibility is still on, on, on the doctor, you see, in this case. Yeah. But the positive thing about this is that if someone, the machine says you are positive, the doctor rushes in, mm. stops you. Of course. There there. So it was a very profound impl uh, implementation there. Right, but, but the key thing was uh, uh, the, 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 the extra phrase that says, we still need a doctor to certify you okay, for the doctor to be responsible to talk to you and telling you you are okay. So, so choose your career carefully, basically. Yes, multi-skilled jobs. Absolutely, that's the way forward. <laughs> the new careers advice, which we get at school. Yeah. I like the <laughs> overlord as well. <laughs> I like the idea of being an overlord. Right? You're yourself job. a multi-skilled. Oh, well, uh, well, I think yeah. we're multi-skilled. <laughs> yeah, you interact with people. Right? Yeah. Uh, you uh, reach, uh, understand, uh, you know, you understand natural language processing, understand what uh, the interviewee is saying. Mm. Uh, you come up with uh, opposing question, probing questions, and you handle camera well. I mean, these are all multi-skilled Right, so what jobs. you're telling us is you that Johnny are safe. You're fine. <laughs> well, well that, that's Thank reassuring. Goodness. Thank goodness for that. I don't want to see any robots <laughs> in suits around for here. The, for the moment, we're safe. But look, I mean, let's, let's broaden things out a bit further yeah. and, and move into the field of quantum computing yeah. in AI. I mean, what is the potential opportunity for that? Mm. There, there are uh, profound people who say that uh, uh, quantum computing will go above AI and create an even um, more advanced uh, AI system. Uh, that, I believe, is true. Right, but uh, it'll be further out in the future. Uh, my belief is that uh, uh, in the nearer term, when quantum computing becomes practical, it should be below. It could be below AI. Why? 
it, is, it will be a system that helps machine to learn faster. That, that's my goal. Quantum computing will be a, a, a method to which a machine can learn faster. Why? Because today, machine requires hundreds of thousands of uh, examples, even millions of examples, to learn from to eventually get good at predicting the future. Mm. Right? Uh, the reason is because they go through a, a, almost a trial and error process right? to look for the minima as they as they, as they try and error through all these examples coming in, they try to get to a minimal uh, a minima, which is a in low enough error for we to say the prediction is good enough. Sure. This is a very time-consuming process, right? A quantum computer can get to that minima quite quickly. This could actually be better than AI. Yes, uh, and you get the AI to be better, right? And by not having to spend so much time going through the learning process and get to the prediction quality much faster. So it's not replacing AI, it's actually making AI more effective. Absolutely. Could you ever replace AI with something above that? That's another question. <laughs> 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 ah, there you go, multi-skilled, right? Multi-skilled, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you probe it, uh, <laughs> that you, you stumped, it, stumped me there. Yes, uh, this is where uh, the, the other group of uh, uh, forward thinkers are thinking uh, quantum, can, quantum computing, quantum information processing, not only goes below AI to accelerate learning, to become a better AI, but also can go above uh, to become the front end of AI, right? And that would be interesting. And Why? AI provides the means to, uh, because AI went through the process of learning from history, and then providing that learnings to the quantum system to ultimately be the front end to humans. So that would be interesting. Right, but we'll be retired by then. So, so of course, the e e excellence, yeah. that means... So I like to, yeah, I like to make predictions that are further ahead, right? Because <laughs> I'll be retired by then. I the won't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fascinating, fascinating <laughs> stuff. Thank you so much, yeah. Dr. Englin Go. Um, hopefully, we'll see you sometime next year. None of us will have been replaced by artificial <laughs> intelligence. Uh, very likely yet. not. Good. Very likely not. I'm, I'm pleased to hear it. I feel very reassured. <laughs> Be reassured, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia. Yeah.